There is no reason to honor anyone who makes you want to die and who disrespects you in every way. And usually that person in the world is the parent or your mate. And that's the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So in the commandments, honor your mother and father is bullshit. I love Patrick Tehan and late Carl Samuel. I mean, sorry. <laughs> There's late Theodore Carl Samuel. Um, mm, a weirdo, but um, he was one of my much lesser uh, abusive boyfriends, right? Uh, but still, I mean, uh, the one point, uh, whatever, uh, 2015, he was totally uh, demanding on me for no reason. So uh, people are going to act totally awful towards you, and then they only choose you to act really awful at that point in time. You live in a crazy world. Like Jeffrey Dahmer never harmed a fly. Think about that. Eight to nine years he was in the military. Because he didn't have the opportunity. That's insane. But late Theodore Carl Samuel had the opportunity for to me in uh, 2015. So yeah, he treated me like the worst. Like shit. Like he, want, he demanded from me from um, doing a four to five little errands every day. And then that went up to everything to to do the make a meal, do the dishes, do his laundry, take out uh do help him do exercises, take you know, and that was for me just to live there for a month. And you don't even know what the wanna know what the fuck really happened. And then all these crackheads live there and steal everything from him, but he treated me the worst. And I counted like fifteen fucking errands for the can you can, can you get my shoes over there? Can you go find my that green t-shirt? I really want to. What happened? Can you go look for this? I mean, oh my god! You treat me like shit, but then you go and give your place away to crackheads. But he, I mean, he should have called the cops the first day. But he was totally insane. Like everyone I know. <laughs> and what he did was he, um, he said he was preaching Jesus to him. And they are like, no, you dumb shit. Your little shitty apartment is their little clubhouse. They claimed it. And they do all their drugs there, whatever they want. Probably have sex in the bathroom and everything else. But you don't know that. Wherever. Whatever. Like. So stupid. Okay. I didn't want to get into that. That's negative. Uh, there, I mean, everyone in my life was completely, totally insane. Like my husband. Uh, what the fuck did he do? bought a $6,000 vehicle and didn't have a driver's license. Is that the dumbest thing you can do? Like, not invest money and make money back and, like, you know, I, I'm not sure how to invest money, but, you know, oh, my God, you don't buy something like a computer and let it sit for a whole fucking year and, and let your car sit for a whole fucking six fucking months. Where you live outside a fucking hotel. Just, you know, I, I I know the craziest people. I was like, what, you know, why am I crazy? There's nothing crazy, you know, that I ever did except, oh, all these insane people are in my life. Like, what, what am I supposed to do about it? So, anyway, um, where I went off the subject because of the name Late Theodore Carl Samuel. So, um, this <laughs> is late George Carlin. Okay. Carl and Carlin 
are a little tiny bit similar. And then I went off in a rant about late Theodore Carlin. So late George Carlin uh, was brilliant in what he said about honor your mother and father. Basically said the same thing that professional Patrick Tehan YouTuber said. Well, <laughs> most parents treat like shit. The, most parents don't deserve anything. Like Steve Lucas it, it was great because he is great to the power of uh, telling the abuser off. Like, who the fuck do you think you are? Yeah, yeah. He's just disgusting. He's like, I met the worst fucking parents in the world. What the fuck? Like, being a police officer, like, oh my God. There's no honor with that. You can't honor that. You can't even love that at a distance. It's like, they're just dead to their children. Like, you don't do any, like, well, at least I brought you into the world. You know, and I mean, that's for people with good lives. <laughs> people who have good lives can say that, right? No. And, like, Joyce Meyer can easily forgive, but she's not a real Jesus person. If there is a Jesus, yes, there's a Jesus to me, and I'm going to pray. Um, but, um, but, yeah, you know why she can forgive? Do you know why people can forgive? Because they're not in their life anymore. Oh, yeah, you can forgive from a... That's loving, you know. Okay, you're not hating on that. But it's impossible to live with an insane abuser. Because once they start... Uh, when they started putting you down, and it might have been the whole time, like your parents, or it might have just started i mean usually with the regular narcissist I, okay with my dead husband it was the first month okay that he he actually um respected me the first month and then all hell broke loose when he decided what he thought was love to love me of course narcissists don't know what love is so they just uh, continually attack their and destroy their victim. And they don't do anything else. There's nothing good about a narcissist at all. Yeah, because they target their victim and that's their victim for life. And that was, you know, my life. Uh, Glenn's still alive. Well, he, he followed me. You know, I, he was a narcissist. He control, controlled me. He had to know where I was at, what I was doing. You know, like, you know, like oh my God, I have to take care of you. My life is total hell. I um I was lied about with my family saying, Oh, I'm, you know, a crackhead living in crack houses. No, my um pay representatives, one was re religious, I'm not gonna say her name because I respect her. And late Susan Chappelle. There was nowhere to rent in Lancaster, so they had to rent the um crack houses to me. And then um Dead Heart. Gerhardt, our crack houses, were, I don't know if they still what the fuck would I know, and then, where I lived at, my last room, ended up being an entire crack house, and I will say God love her, she's an atheist, Donna, she was my good friend, and then she just stopped talking to people like Melody, so these two women are two women that I'd love to rescue. I'll just pray for them right now. You know, no, nobody else cares about the homeless. You know, I care because I was there. Not talking to anybody and mumbling under my breath. I hate. Uh, <laughs> podcast tour. Because I had every right to with what the fuck was done to me. Illegally labeled prostitute. Get the fuck out of here. Oh my god. I have every right to say podcast tour. Because, you know, where's my... You know, um, my defamation of my name in 2012 on my, hacked up on my Facebook, where, what do I get? Oh, I got raped. I was, yeah. That's what I think about my, I think worse about my family. So, and I have every right to. 
And my Jesus does too. My Jesus hates my family as much as I do. And all the narcissists that were in my life. And some of them died. Late Theodore Carl Samlin, late Arthur S. Nault III, my late husband, James Lester Sapone. Uh, Theodore Carl Samlin was not a child monster. The other two were. Another guy. Another guy. Um, the guy that raped me um, at 12 Farnham Street, late Michael Allen Bellis. Okay, I loved it. The one uh, Mexican. Now, this Mexican was an asshole because he just wanted to have sex with me. But, oh my God, all the hell that I went through with my Carlos Bellas. He beat him the fuck up. That's great. I was crying. I was crying. He, I mean, I'm, I'm just, he did. He, he, he wouldn't stop raping me. And then Glenn William Grevin saved me from him. And uh, the year of, uh, what the fuck year was that? 2012. Oh my God, when Tramp of Lancaster was hacked up on my Facebook. Yeah, great. Um, oh my God. Uh, so this Mexican beat him up. He was drunk, but he just, pow, pow, pow. He gave him a bloody head. So, I, I, you know, you, us humans can take a lot of, you know, abuse. That's great. That's awesome. But it still did not keep him away from me. Well, I'll just fucking finish with Ted Michael and those. Um, it was great. Um, I had to leave from 12 Farnham Street, right? And I got another dead heart, Gerhardt building, and it was, it, that was all, the whole place was a crack house. At least 12 East Farnham Street, at least that red building Half of the people did crack. And then the other building, it was small. There was an apartment downstairs. The little baby crying all the time. Other, so there was uh, two apartments, two rooms upstairs. Not apartments. Fucking shitty ass rooms. Okay. Three rooms on the top. Two apartments on the bottom. I mean, in the second floor. Or three apartments on the second floor. I'm not sure. The whole place was a crack house. Just totally awful. And the baby cried all the time. And I was scared to death. And um, <clears throat> my pay representative was that out of it. She me by a microwave and and a little refrigerator, you know, in your new place. I said, no, I got to get out of here. I'm, I'm scared to death. Some crackhead was outside my door. I mean, this is my fucking life. You know, I, you know, I did a little crack with Glenn William Grevin, but no, I never... You know, a crack prostitute that my certain family members lied to me about. And I wasn't supposed to say all this shit. Okay, but I was going to end it with um, 12 East Farnham Street. This is funny to me. I go in and I say, uh, my dad drove me with Glenn William Grevin. I need to get my shit out of there. And he, he's the problem, right? <laughs> so I just walk in there. I said, hi, dad. Look, here's my rapist. And so he absolutely hated me. And you no, no, no. Just like, you know. <laughs> I can't say it because I honor my dad. Um, they, my dad and my um boyfriend that I didn't want. They were pussies, you could say. But that's kind of, that's really mean, mean, mean derogatory to uh, women, ladies. So, But they were weak. Little puppy dogs. Little, little, tiny, little puppy dogs. And they, they went, I said, what the <laughs> I was fucking drunk. I'm like, what the fuck? I bear you fucking pussies. What the hell is the matter with you? <laughs> and I'm fucking beat them up myself. <laughs> See, so when you're drunk... You get strong sometimes. Like, oh, fuck it, beat the fuck up. I don't care. I need you guys to go up to that fucking room. Get my fucking shit out now. So they were afraid and they stayed outside. So I had to fucking bag all my shit up in trash bags and um, leave. And of course, Michael, dead Michael Allen Bellis 
total insane abusing narcissist that he was obsessed the hell with me. Kiddo, you want me to help you? Yeah, I'll help you. Get the fuck away from me. I'm trying to pay my dad to beat you up, but oh god. <laughs> and my boyfriend can join in. Shit. Where's fucking money at when a victim needs money? Pay. Pay. <laughs> I'm paying my lesser abuser to beat up my worst abuser. There you go. <laughs> I. That's what this world's all about. I stayed with the lesser evil, uh, Glenn William Grennan, instead of with late Michael Allen Bellis. Fuck. I wasn't supposed to. Uh, I was going to pray. Uh, 